How you guys doing? You want to take the phone out too? Right? It's like, ah, that's my thing. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is another edition of Conference Room B here at MSG, and I'm sitting here with Action Bronson. How are you feeling? I couldn't be better. So we know that you are, I want to say, a lifelong Knicks fan. Yes. And you, you're definitely familiar with Celebrity Row. Ideal celebrity uh, seatmates when you're sitting courtside. Uh, Santana, Carlos. Wow. Jewel's also. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Latrell Sprewell. Okay, so I gotta ask you then, what makes what makes a good celebrity seatmate? I don't know, someone that's into the game. I like I, I like I like little uh, side commentary. It's almost as if it's sports talk radio during the game. What are the policies up there? Because there's a certain form of etiquette that you need for to sit courtside. You can't have your legs too far out there. You can't be. I don't have that issue. I have a shorter leg. Yeah. <laughs> a shorter, I have a leg, shorter leg. Yeah, the situation. I, you know, I'm perfect. I'm perfect for the for, court for the yeah. yeah. There's no there's no other place to put me. But there, is there a behavior that you see sometimes? You're like, oh, this is not fitting. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the excessive yelling at the other team and the obscenities, it's unnecessary. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just have to you know keep your mouth shut. I like to talk to myself. Like, oh, it was a foul. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm getting in depth with myself because I feel like that's the only person I could talk to. And I feel like as a New York sports fan, New, York's, New York in general, they're different. But New York sports fans, there's a certain breed. What makes a qualified New York sports fan? Because you gotta, you gotta have a tough. I just stomach, saw a, Didi. A big I just heart. seen Didi Gregorius in the elevator, and I felt like a little kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't get, a, I don't get starstruck from anybody except sports players. Okay. I don't know why. Top New York sports figures that you've been around, you've been like, whoa. Jeter. You've met a lot. Jeter. Jeter is at the top of that list, man. What a, what a human. So I know that a lot of rappers, everyone loves sports, and the athletes want to be ballers, that whole crossover right there. But for you, if you had to pick starting five and you're on a team, or wait, wait, hold on, first off, would you be the coach or would you be on the court? Or would you be a player coach like Bill Russell? Mm, you know, my jump shot is it's out of control, wet. I stepped on the court at MSG, and the first four shots were just, I, just kunk, kunk. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah. I've documented it, and I went eight for 14 that day. You need a contract. She signed me up, you know, <laughs> five, eight, with stilts on, you know? You go into arenas. Um, I went upstairs, and I was surprised at all the food options. I thought that it was they still have a nice spread. No, they have a nice spread. What makes There's it? There's carving tables. They had sushi in there? Yeah, there's stations to carve, there's sushi. I know that there's people that do collaborations here and stuff mm. like that, so I'm interested in that. So what makes, what is the, the, the quality sports arena meal? Is it just the hot dog, you know what I mean, and the fries, or is it one of these other options? Like, what would you do to set it right? You know what, I think when they try and go too elegant, it becomes a little bit, eh. Mm. You end up going for the chicken fingers and fries regardless, you know what I mean? Prepare good things, you know? Don't try and go into like the, the Wolfgang Puck cookbook. You know what I mean? You just gotta make good, hearty, tasty, delicious food. Yeah. That holds well at stadiums. Okay. Dude, you have a couple different arenas that you're in, right? You're doing rap, you, everyone's aware of what you do with food and television. Now you also have a shoe dropping? I'm a best-selling author as well. A best-selling author? There's no doubt about that. New York Times bestseller all throughout every platform that there could be to be Audio a bestseller. Audio stream, yeah. All that. Um, yeah, you have to say that. I'm not, I would be upset if you didn't mention my best-selling author. To me, if, if you have, like, if you're an Oscar winner, then I need to introduce you. Of like course, that. you know that's what, what next, I'm saying. I'm, we should it really, supersedes me. When you walk out, I'm going to redo the intro. It's nah, it's all right. Here. You said it. No, nah, you know, it's, it's set in stone already. <laughs> <laughs> but the shoe, tell me more about the shoe you got coming up. Oh, yeah, I did a little collaboration with Adidas because I'm such a big fan of the Ultra Boost, you mm -hmm. know? I feel like I've been wearing that shoe even before it came out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I had it on before everybody. And they decided, they, you know, we'd do a little co uh, collaboration, but it's only going to be 100 pairs, friends and family. Why is that? Why not throw it in the market? Uh, I don't know. That's on them. <laughs> I would love to. Yeah. I designed four or five of them that could be fire. Trust me. So what other arenas are you looking to get into, man? Because I feel like, for one, I don't understand how you do all of this and still rap. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, man. It's just that I, I have my hands in all the... I, have to, I feel like I have to use my brain for other things than just that because I'm, I'm, I was meant to. I've been sculpting lately. And I have about 12 different sculptures from gorilla heads to... I like animals. Yeah. I also like distorted animals, sick ones. 
<laughs> like like one eye and a third eye popping out and, you know, <laughs> shards of glass, his teeth and mirrors his eyes. And this is like the sculpture that you have? Yeah. And Actually. I paint a lot also. Yeah. I've been painting so much lately, it's crazy. You know, you just get in the studio, you get you straight up, get naked and just start painting. The thing is, I know that you're telling the truth. Yeah, like. there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Put on a little bit of uh, Thelonious. Yeah, what's the mm -hmm. soundtrack to this? I like listening to a lot of, uh, you know, African psychedelic rock and roll from the 70s. Yeah. Ghana funk, Nigerian funk. Okay. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. How does this all tie back into the music and stuff you have coming up? Man, you know, I'm from Queens. There's so many different inspirations from all over the world, and I just take all those and put it into my craft. Hmm. And White Bronco is all that, you know? Yeah. It's one of those, it's one of those projects where I don't, I don't, I don't boast, I just tell you, I promise you it's fire. Okay. You know, some of my best work, in my opinion, and I'm a tough critic. So if you were to look at your albums and you're looking at White Bronco, where are you at in your career? And what I want to tie it to is, if you had to call this album a basketball player, if this album had to be a basketball player, what player is it, based on your lineage? Well, this was supposed, this was originally called the Human Highlight Reel. Wow. So it's so, Dominique. Okay. You know, this is Dominique doing all kinds of acrobatics. You know what I like about you, Action? Talk to me. I think a lot of people want to live your life. They don't want to live this but life. But they can't. It's hard to tie my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're done. <laughs> Thank Action. you guys so Thank much. Thank you, man. It's always my good man. seeing you, man. You're the oh, best. Man. <laughs>